Hey everyone, this is Marcus again with another week of IB Biology. So something that I want to make clear that might not have been very clear last week is that first of all we're calling it standard level for now, but obviously this is something that goes for everyone that is taking biology SL or HL. We're thinking about maybe later on adding the part that is only relevant for HL students. For now this goes for everyone that is taking biology in the IB. Something else that I find super important is your feedback. So Please do leave comments in the section below under the video if there's anything that you feel is unclear, anything that uh, you want to hear more about. I can always try to adapt the next video, maybe go back to something that we covered the week before. So um, do feel free to let us know um, and especially me know what you think is good, what can be done better. As we go through the videos, we'll also start to add, after we sort of covered the basis, we will add more test preparation, sample questions from IB exams, etc. So that it becomes very applied and sort of hands-on, because I think that's really what you need going through the IB. So after last week's introduction, today we're going to focus on cells. Last week we already heard something about cell theory. All living organisms are composed of cells and they are the building blocks of life. And today we're going to go a bit deeper into that, talk about what makes a living cell, uh, what are the important constituent parts, etc. The first thing I want to say is that there's a big differentiation to make. Because if you think of organisms, yes, they're all composed of cells. But there are actually two different kinds of organisms and that's one of the most fundamental differentiation in biology and that's going to be important in every single part of the syllabus so this is important to get right there are so-called prokaryotic cells and that means pro means before and karyotic comes from the greek word for core so prokaryotic means before the core that means that cells that we say are prokaryotic do not have a cell core, which is what we call a cell nucleus. On the other hand, there are eukaryotic cells. Eu means true, so they do have a core, eukaryotic. And eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus. Obviously, the next question is, what's a nucleus? A nucleus is the area of the cell where the genetic material, or DNA usually, is packaged and stored. So in eukaryotic cells, there is a nucleus. In prokaryotic cells, the genetic information is just floating around. Obviously, now the question is, what are examples of this? Well, prokaryotic cells, you know very well from your daily life, those are bacteria. Obviously, a lot of different categories and um, differentiations to make there, but that's um, something to keep in mind for now. Eukaryotic cells is most everything else. So eukaryotic cells, that would be, for instance, um, all the cells in your body are eukaryotic. And um, another distinction here, and that's important not to confuse, there are single-celled organisms and multicellular organisms. So that means that you have something like an amoeba, uh, which is a single-celled organism, but it is eukaryotic. All prokaryotic organisms are single-celled, but not all single-celled organisms are prokaryotic. Does that make sense to you? So that's two sort of terminologies that are important to differentiate between. However, the fact that prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus and eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus is actually not the only factor that we can use to determine whether a cell is prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Another important thing is that prokaryotic cells do not have what we call compartmentalization. So you can think of a compartment as, for example, in your car, the glove compartment. It's like a little separate entity that you can put stuff in that is shielded from the outside. And so if you have compartmentalization, which is true for eukaryotic cells, that means that there are inside of the cell, which of course is bound by a membrane, inside there are other organelles which are also membrane bound. So if we look at a picture of this, we can see the prokaryotic cell does not have any internal organelles. So you know that term already because we spoke about organs, right? But organs we look at on a much bigger scale, right? We have an organism, the human for instance, 
we look at an organ like the heart, the liver, etc., which has similar tissues, so similar cells. And then if we look at the cell now, there are organelles. So that means that we are on the cell level distinguishing between different functions that are carried out. Obviously, in the prokaryotic cell, there are also different functions carried out, but that all happens in the cytoplasm, so in the internal fluid that is part of the cell, whereas in the eukaryotic cell, in the cytoplasm, there are certain organelles, and they have their own membranes, for instance, the nucleus, but also others that we'll cover in a second. And so that is another important feature. Prokaryotic cells do not have compartmentalization. That is only true for eukaryotic cells. Of all the organelles that we're going to name, that we're going to learn, some are what we call universal. So that means they're present in both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. The first one that I want to talk about is the ribosome. So the ribosome is made up of two subunits, as you can see here. And they differ in eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells, but their function is the same. They are the site of polypeptide synthesis. So what that means is proteins are made here, which is something that we're gonna look at in a lot of detail later on during the course. What's also universal is the plasma membrane, which I mentioned before. So prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have on the outside, because of course we want to keep an internal cell environment different from the outside, they have a plasma membrane, which is made up of a phospholipid bilayer, and there are proteins embedded in that. They are used for transport and other functions. What's important about the plasma membrane is that it is semi-permeable, so it is a selective barrier. Permeable means some stuff can get through and other stuff cannot. And so semi means about half. So semi-permeable in the end means what we want to get through the membrane, we can have come through, and what we want to leave on the inside or the outside, we can regulate that. So now that we covered the universal organelles, let's look at those that are only present in eukaryotic cells. So that would be, for instance, animal or plant cells, right? But also fungi, certain protista like the amoeba, etc. So the first one, and we already named that one, is the nucleus. So the nucleus is the area of the cell where the genetic information is stored. So in eukaryotic cells, it's in the form of chromosomes. It has a double membrane with pores so that we can get stuff in and out of the nucleus. That'll be important later because obviously we're going to do something to that genetic material. And then there's an inner region, which is called the nucleolus, and that's where the genetic information is stored. Another organelle that you've probably heard of already in a previous biology class is the mitochondrion. And what people usually say is the mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell, right? I think there's even a meme about it. And so what the mitochondrion really does is very similar to that. But for the sake of the IB biology course, we're going to be a little more specific so the mitochondrion is also one of those organelles which has a double membrane structure. And all those membranes, they're going to be important later, so do remember that. Double membrane structure um, with a folded inner membrane that gives us more surface area, which will be important for the chemical processes that are occurring there. And what happens there is, yes, it's sort of the powerhouse of the cell because uh, it's the site of aerobic cellular respiration. So cellular respiration briefly is the process by which we take organic molecules and we create energy. We store energy in the form of ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. That's also something very central to remember. Do remember what ATP is. It's a high energy molecule and that's how we sort of transfer energy within the cell. And now finally, before I let you go for today, a quick thought on sort of the course content, because last week I announced that today we would also be going over molecular biology and evolution, but we focused more on cells. That's because we thought it would be easier for you to follow this course while you're in school, while you're doing the IB, 
if we stick a bit more closely to the syllabus. So I know that different schools go at different paces, but I think it's easier for you to follow and also to learn for tests or your mock exams if we have it structured a bit more closely to the syllabus. That doesn't mean that we can't go back and forth and draw parallels to other areas of the syllabus, but that's it for now. So that's why we have a slight change of content. So you have to wait a little longer until we finally get to more of molecular biology, macromolecules, etc. And of course, we'll get to evolution later as well. So stay tuned for next week's video. And also make sure to leave comments if you have questions or thoughts and follow our Len Turner channel. We post videos on revision techniques as well, and we'll cover other IB subjects as well soon. So make sure to follow, like us on Facebook and stay up to date. We have a blog where we post about the IB and your experience. So that's a great resource for you. Take care and see you next week.